There's always a question mark over whether a player can really be considered great if they struggle to deliver on the biggest stage. It's often what separates one champion from another in people's minds and in front bar arguments when comparing players. September performances have always and will always be the yardstick when talking about the best from the best. All that being said, I'm Paul Robinson from Off The Play. Let's run through seven massive individual finals performances of the AFL era. Number seven, Paul LeCuria versus Port Adelaide in the 2002 qualifying final. One from left field, but when you take into account how big of an upset this was, it really just adds to the legend. In the previous five matches to the O2 qualifier, Paul LeCuria averaged 21 touches and the Pies were massive outsiders to beat the Premiership favourites Port Adelaide in South Australia. No one predicted what happened next. In the absence of Nathan Buckley, LeCuria stepped up and had a career best 40 disposals. In today's game, 40 disposals doesn't seem like that much of a shock or that much of a big deal, but that just wasn't the case in 2002. No one was getting 40 disposals. The next highest ball winner from that match was Port Adelaide's Josh Franku, who had 27 and just happened to be Paul Lecuria's direct opponent for the match. Simply put, Lecuria took his own footy to the Oval that night. It springboarded Collingwood's 0-2 finals campaign and finally, the black and white army dared to dream. Number six, Buddy Franklin v Adelaide in the 2007 elimination final. The Hawks absolutely nailed their three picks in the top 10 of the 2004 draft. Roughhead, Lewis, and Franklin. But by 2007, it was clear Buddy was ahead of the pack. His coming of age game in the 2007 elimination final against the Crows is a thing of beauty. It wasn't just the fact that he bagged seven, it was how he kicked them. He looked like he was out there making a statement with the way he went about it. It ended up being his trademark what he did that day. He kicked them from 50 with no issue. He was crumbing his own footy and jagging snaps. For anyone in the AFL world that hadn't already stood up and taken notice of Buddy, you couldn't help but do it now. 12 months later, he became the 28th player to get 100 goals in a season. Number five, Simon Black v Collingwood in the 2003 Grand Final. I don't know if there's ever been a cleaner player than Simon Black, and it was on full display in the 2003 Grand Final. Nine tackles, seven inside 50s, a goal, and 39 disposals just proves that he could do it all. One of the all-time greats put in his best match at just 24 years old on the biggest stage of the game. Lee Matthews has since said that it felt like he was watching Black play with his own footy, so you can just imagine how the Pies midfielders felt chasing his tail all day. It was a dominant display of everything great about our game. No one since has had a higher number of disposals in a grand final, and I wouldn't be shocked if that record stands for another 20 odd years. Luke Powells tells a story of how him and a few Lions boys were having some beers the week after the 2003 grand final. They bump into none other than Pies president, Eddie Maguire, who proceeds to congratulate the boys on their three in a row, even though two of them were against his side. The only satisfaction he may have got was when Powell's phone rang and it was Simon Black. Eddie calmly asked, can I have the phone? I wouldn't mind giving him a quick message. Eddie Maguire answers, says, hey Simon, it's Eddie. Get fucked. Get fucked 39 times. Number four, Dom Sheed v Collingwood in the 2018 Grand Final. If it wasn't for superstar Luke Shuey's remarkable day out in this game, Dom Sheed would have had two medals around his neck. 32 disposals, eight clearances, and one of, if not the best, goal in grand final history. It's what every kid dreams of, and Dom Sheed got a chance to live it. A goal from the boundary to win the premiership. I'd be shocked if Dom Sheed pays for another beer in Western Australia again. The calmness under pressure is something that I think, no matter how much it's talked about, is always going to be criminally underrated. Sheed has since described the moment while lining up for goal as if the whole MCG went quiet. Well, I was there and I can tell you, it certainly wasn't. I don't think Sheed's gonna be getting a comical phone call from Eddie Maguire anytime soon. Number three, Mason Cox v Richmond in the 2018 prelim. When Collingwood played the Hawks in round one of 2018, you'd be put in the bin if you said Mason Cox was gonna do what he's best known for now. An American import who hadn't even heard of Aussie rules a few years earlier, was now the reason Richmond didn't get a crack at back-to-back flags. Just let that ring out in your head. He had the match of a lifetime on the best defender in this generation in Alex Rance. It's still pretty crazy to think that's how it's happened, but that's how it went down. One person who wouldn't have been too shocked by it was his captain, Scott Pendlebury, 
who 12 months earlier on his Jock and Journo podcast said, this is probably a big call, but I wouldn't be surprised if Coxie did at some stage in his career have a nine or 10 goal game in him. Yeah, it wasn't quite 10 goals, but let's give Pendles the benefit of the doubt that he called it before anyone else did. Number two, Anthony Kudafidis v Essendon in the 1999 prelim. Even if you're not a Carlton fan, you know the story of this game. Essendon were red hot favorites. Carlton were lucky to be there. This was supposed to be an easy kill for the Dons before the much anticipated North Melbourne v Essendon grand final. The only problem, no one gave Cuda the script. After being down by 24 points at halftime, the Bombers kicked seven goals to two in the third quarter to take an 11 point lead at the last break. That's when it happened. Cuda flicked the switch. He made it known in years previous to his coach that he wanted more midfield minutes and he was finally moved into the guts. From here on, it was magic. He was everywhere. He was taking one-handed marks down back. He was taking pack marks up forward. Brilliant playmaking throughout the middle. He recorded 127 champion data points, and that was just in the last quarter. It was like something no one had seen before. 10 kicks, six marks, two handballs, two goals, and one massive upset. And number one, Nick Davis v Geelong in the 2005 semi-final. I see it, but I don't believe it. Anthony Hudson said what the nation was thinking in 2005 when we all saw Nick Davis kick four goals in the last quarter. When you compare it to the Swans' three goals for the previous three quarters, it's pretty wild to think. And it's not like Davis was the only target in the Swans' forward line for the team like Barry Hall and Mickey O. It was how he kicked them that made it all so special. It looked like he was plucking the footy from the sky at some stages. So much history came from this match and from that quarter. Without it, there'd be no, here it is from Paul Roos on grand final day. The Cats would have played St Kilda next week in the prelim final, and it's a mystery what would have happened there. We would have seen one of those sides against West Coast in a grand final. We wouldn't have Leo Barry, you star, we wouldn't have the Swans' 72-year flag drought being broken. It would have extended out to 73. And who knows how different football history would have been, and next few seasons especially, if Nick Davis didn't kick those four goals. Not only did he kick them, he was the second highest disposal winner for the Swans that night with 24 touches. 24 Ds and four goals. What a game. What a moment. What a man. Well, that's our list. What about you guys? Any Unreal Finals performances we missed out on? What ones stick out in your mind? Leave comments below. Like, share, and subscribe to Off The Play for some more footy content.